And that's the countdown, T minus 11 minutes and 53 seconds and counting toward the launch of Apollo 10. All going well, the weather is all right, although it's clouding up quite a bit here. Not too much wind, waves a little high, but they're all right for rescue if that were necessary. The uh, three astronauts are in the command module there at the 320 foot level, that 363 foot booster and its payload, and we're ready to go. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. Just a little over 10 minutes from the launch of Apollo 10 now, all going well, the countdown continuing. You know, throughout uh, these flights, uh, we're able by the miracle of television, not only to show you the television pictures from out there, but to uh, simulate uh, at uh, North American Rockwell in Downey, California, where they build the command module, and clear across the country at Bethpage, Long Island, where they build the lunar module, uh, the actual events as they're taking place with full simulators built to full scale and with the chief test engineers from both of those companies aboard as our test astronauts. Scott McLeod's the man at Grumman and Leo Krupp's the man at North American Rockwell. And uh, gentlemen, we've already heard from both of you this morning, but uh, welcome back. Uh, we've got eight days ahead of us. I, I hope uh, we all have a successful flight. Scott, you're looking well this morning, and Leo, uh, you're looking well. Thank you, Walter. What, uh, what would you gentlemen say are the most critical points of this flight from each of your standpoints? Well, I guess uh, <laughs> from the lunar module standpoint, each step, as Tom Stafford had pointed out before, is a critical step. Uh, I don't see any that is more critical than the other, except that each one follows the other one, Walter. Uh, what about the, uh, the descent down to the 10-mile altitude? Now, now they're going to be passing over that landing site there in the Sea of Tranquility, where man probably will land in July, at uh, 50,000 feet, a little over nine and a half miles high actually and around 3,500 miles an hour. At that speed and at that altitude, are they going to really see very much and they're going to pass below them pretty rapidly? Well, yes. As they come down to that 50,000 foot altitude, they will slowly pitch over so they can observe the site as they approach it and also take some good photographs of it. And then they will burn their ascent engine and head on up toward their rendezvous. Do you have any concern about these mass cons, these mass concentrations of apparently magnetic material that are causing some deviation in the uh, previous orbital flights around the moon, manned, and uh, causing any difficulty with the lunar module at that low altitude? That's a little out of my field, but uh, I don't have any concern about it, no. You're prepared to handle the equipment if, uh, <laughs> if, if all goes well, well otherwise, are you, Scott? Yes, and I have a lot of confidence that it will all go well. We won't really be uh, seeing you, Scott, uh, very much in there uh, because you don't uh, climb down into that uh, representing uh, Cernan and, uh, and Stafford until Wednesday uh, for the first uh, look around in the lunar module. But in the meantime, uh, all the activities in the command module, and Leo, you're going to be the boy. Uh, yes, sir. What, what do you see as critical points in this flight? Well, Walter, it's pretty hard to pin down just which point in the flight is the most critical. Actually, the landing and the takeoff are usually the most interesting and critical to a pilot. But on this flight, uh, the flight itself has so many interesting aspects that it's going to be exciting uh, the entire flight. Uh, the first thing I'm looking forward to is the cislunar navigation. That's while the two vehicles are, are docked and coasting toward the moon, uh, I'm very interested to find out just what effect the lunar module docked on the front end of the command module is going to have on our navigational ability. As you know, uh, John Young will be doing star sighting. The vehicles are, are docked and system, coasting uh, toward the moon. Lighting certain stars, uh, I'm very interested to find out just what effect the lunar module docked on the front end of the command module is going to have on our navigational ability. As you know, uh, John Young will be doing star sightings with the navigation system. Uh, sighting certain stars, feeding us into the computer for solutions on his trajectory. And the fact that the lunar module is docked on the front end, this is going to be an obstruction to part of his field of view. And also, since the vehicle is going to be in full sunlight all the way, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if we have any light re reflection problems off the lunar module into his optics, which might hamper his sighting on the stars. And Leo, we're going to get uh, television pictures if all goes well of that uh, first docking uh, maneuver, I believe. The first television transmission is scheduled for, uh, for just about that hour this afternoon, is it not? 
Uh, yes, sir, and that's going to be extremely uh, interesting because they're going to have that color TV camera mounted in Gene Cernan's rendezvous window looking along the x-axis of the vehicle, which will be looking right straight toward the lunar module. So you should be able to see the uh, command module closing on the lunar module. And since the Earth will be in full sunlight and, and about 10,000 miles away, uh, perhaps we can see the Earth in the background on this shot. Uh, there's one thing you ought to be aware of, Walter, is since that camera will be in Gene Cernan's window, you will not get a, an accurate the presentation of the docking target because you'll be offset from the pilot's line of sight about five feet so your standoff cross will not be exactly superimposed on that docking target i don't suppose that will bother us earthbound laymen that much uh, leo pictures sound pretty good thank you gentlemen we'll be coming back to you very shortly with the countdown now at t-minus uh, five minutes and 16 seconds and counting let me tell you very quickly what you're going to be seeing and what you can sort of look for on this liftoff the ignition sequence, the engines fire up nine seconds before the actual liftoff. The uh, hold down arms are thrown away and away they go. That's to build up power and up they go, seven and a half million pounds of thrust. A liftoff comes uh, at that point at zero. Then they kind of uh, yaw a little bit. They turn around and pitch over to start their course out over the Atlantic uh, Ocean from here. At uh, 1 minute and 21 seconds into the flight, they reach the maximum max Q, it's called, the maximum dynamic pressure. And this is a critical point in the flight. Uh, at that point, if there are any structural weaknesses in this great rocket, they would probably show up. An aerodynamic load of 460,000 pounds on the vehicle. It's eight miles high at that point, four miles downrange. That's when you see the contrail begin right at that point. It's mo moving then at uh, some 1,786 miles an hour. Then in two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, the inboard engines cut off, and just uh, 20 seconds later, the outboard engine of the uh, uh, s uh, 1C, the first stage of the rocket. It's then 40 miles high, 44 miles downrange at... Uh, then the separation of the first stage and the ignition of the second stage, two minutes and 43 seconds into the flight. And uh, we see the launch escape system. We've seen it jettison in the past at three minutes and 17 seconds. The second stage cuts off at seven minutes and 40 seconds. The vehicle then 111 miles downrange, or uh, high, and uh, 700 miles downrange, almost in its orbital height. And we have seen that far in the past uh, with uh, these remarkable long lens cameras here. Uh, we may not be able to see that today because of the cloud cover. The third stage then ignites at uh, nine minutes into the flight, and uh, they're well on their way into orbit, and shortly thereafter, uh, in the second orbit around the Earth, into the translunar flight. Jack King of uh, Launch Control here, who will be giving us the countdown from this moment. He is uh, giving that countdown now, and it is at just three minutes before launch.